swept up in today's independent music. Good morning, everyone. In case it's not morning, we're at good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I'm your host, Anthony Longhair Leclerc, and I'm joined by my fabulous co host, the marvelous Marl the Mouse McCarty. What's up, everybody? And we are on our ninth single sweep episode. We are. It's, it's exciting. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's, we don't have that many, actually. Yeah, we don't. But I mean, it is kind of like a slightly newer thing, I guess. So. I guess. I think we've just been lazy. Um, because we have over a hundred episodes of the daily sweep out i mean people could call us lazy but i was gonna say realistically we have a ton of episodes out of the other podcast so yeah um and we we have some album reviewing to do as well actually so Mm -hmm. we need to light a fire so if anyone thinks we're lazy i'm sorry but also you can suck it yeah uh, but anyway, this is episode 9 of The Single Sweep, and we are bringing to you someone who we've actually already reviewed before. A uh, new single, obviously. We're not going to do the same fucking thing over again. Mm-hmm. So, we are reviewing the latest release by Leanna Chapman, who is a Toronto-based musician, a pop artist, and uh, she has released her new track called Therapy. Mm-hmm. Now, uh presumably uh, having clicked on this episode you've seen the uh the art for the track um you can imagine what kind of therapy it might be we shall find out the only thing that comes to my so by the way we haven't listened to the track yet i specifically went out of my way to not listen to the track yet it uh it debuted on valentine's day i'm very sorry liana i did want to have an episode out by then but uh we had gigs lined up all that week in into the weekend so uh and then a concert series we were hosting uh, at my place so uh we didn't really have time to do that but now we are getting to it and we are getting it out there so additional promotion now that valentine's day is over um but anyway i went out of my way to not listen to this so i know you've not listened yeah i to haven't it heard either. any of it at all so we're gonna be jumping in um headlong without any idea what's going on but just from the the artwork for it and the title, all it makes me think of is sexual healing. <laughs> that's, that's that's what it makes me think about. That's fair. Also, yeah. considering the content of her last single, I would say that's might be a safe guess. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what it's like. I have I have no idea. Yeah. And uh, for those of you who didn't check out Liana's uh, last single that we covered. We will link it in the description below so you can check out her previous track, Sin. Um, and so if you are a fan of pop music, do check that out. Um, and we're just going to jump right in and... Uh, go headlong right into it. Yeah. We're just going to go ahead uh, straight into therapy. The doctor's in and uh, here we go. So everyone get your dollars out because we know that therapy ain't cheap. <laughs> Therapy, 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 
All right, that was Therapy by Leanna Chapman. There it is. Thoughts? Um, I definitely, like, am getting a major, like, mid to late 2000s pop vibe from that song. It's very, like, it makes me think of Usher. Like, it really, with the with the synth, it really makes me think of Usher. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like, it's, like, it, it brings me back to, like, all the music that I used to hear at, like, every dance when I was in high school. Like, that's definitely what the, the vibe of that song is bringing to me. I do also understand why she released that on Valentine's Day. <laughs> yes. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, look, I'm going to preface this, all of this, with uh, the same way I prefaced the last time we we covered... Uh, one of Leanna Chapman songs, mm. and it's the same thing I do every time we cover pop or rap or country. I'm not a particular fan of any of these genres, just so you're aware. So anything I say, you can mainly take with a grain of salt, because what the fuck do I know about the genre in the first place? And then secondly, what I do enjoy of any of these things, you can take to the nth degree if you want, because it actually means that there was something about it that I was like, hey, that works. Mm-hmm. So... Having said all that, um, I think the intro. Could, okay, I'm gonna before I start nitpicking and being an asshole, I'm just gonna <laughs> say straight up that Leanna Chapman can sing. Yeah, she's a great voice. And I wish I could hear more of her singing. Because mm-hmm. that like. That synth, mm-hmm. that that Usher synth, rave party synth stuff you're talking about, that was like almost at the same pitch at certain points as her vocals, oh, and yeah, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't ruin it in the mix. It's just like it's a lot of high end, and I would rather the clarity of her voice. And she still comes through, obviously, and you still hear. And like the bridge part, like the stuff where she goes like super high, I really like that. That makes me like, mm. mm-hmm. so I get. You know, I get that moment where I'm just like, yeah. Yeah. Um, so more of that, please. Um, I, yeah. And I, so I, the auto tune stuff, I realize it's kind of necessary now in the genre to, to use that. Yeah. I mean, it's very, it's pretty much standard at this point. Like, So anything I say about auto tune, fucking disregard, I guess. But I think, because I also, because Leanna, for the longest time, and I don't think she does anymore because I think she's she's done away with Facebook, and I haven't. Um, I don't know if she started doing this on her Instagram yet, but um, she used to just post videos of her just singing, like mm-hmm. straight up, like just here's my phone, I'm singing now, right? Yeah. So from that, like I already know her vocal chops, so it having that. Um sort of done slightly away with with the auto tune saddens me. Uh that's that's no fault of of Leanna Chapman's. That's a that's a fault of the genre failing her ability, I think, because it's become this whole thing where everyone needs to add this auto tune for this cool effect that makes their voice sound all robotic and mm-hmm. perfect pitch and blah, blah blah blah. But I've heard her bloody voice without any of that and I would love to hear it again. <laughs> And on one of her tracks. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that, for sure. And, um, so yeah, so there's that. Uh, then, uh, it, to get nitpicky, um, I, I would have the intro, like, cut it in half. Mm-hmm. And same with each subsequent chorus. Oh, yeah, that was the one thing for me, too, like, I, like, the chorus is really catchy, and I know that's gonna get stuck in my head, for sure. I just thought it was it went on a little bit too long like in the intro it makes a bit more sense because you're starting it out without the full oomph of the music yeah so you want to start off with like establishing the point your love is therapy okay we got that good then we're in we're adding a bit more of the the ambience of the song itself okay you know your love is all i need cool and then once that beat drops, then you want to keep that rolling into that thing. Okay, now we have this full realization of this moment. Your love is therapy, your love is all I need, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. 
But to say that eight times is like, and there's also the addition of the harmonies, the high, the high harmony part um, in the second run of the chorus. So if you could slash, because uh, the intro is just a full run of the chorus, right? But mm-hmm. slightly different because it starts off with less of the music. So if that was all compressed into the, just the into the normal four, so your love is therapy, your love is therapy, your love is all I need, your love is therapy, done verse into that right and yeah. or, or like the musical interlude or whatever because people are gonna people are certainly going to get down to this song oh yeah like when i was the whole time i was listening to that song i was like yes this is definitely gonna be what like it sounds like a song that should be played at the club yeah absolutely it, it's it's meant for the club and or the bedroom like i mean it's, it's meant for strobe lighting <laughs> that's, you know and and that's the thing uh, it so in that in that sense, it's going to work. And the hook on the chorus is going to work. But I think it would work more effectively if there was more um, more either diversity in the vocals, meaning like a extra verse or an extension of the verse where she does some crazy cool vocal shit, which I know she can do. Mm-hmm. Um, or... Uh, more of that synth stuff and like a little like it's like a solo idea of that rather than just the interludes between uh verse and chorus yeah and uh yeah that's that's my thought on that i think if if you have the intro and the choruses then you'd get that hook in people's heads regardless and then you could do some really interesting uh vocal stuff or instrumental stuff that would enhance further uh, the effectiveness of the track, which again, as I say, is going to work in a club. If you play this in a club and people aren't dancing, then there's either not enough booze or like the sound doesn't work or something. In exactly. my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so I'm sorry. I feel like I'm coming down hard on this track, and I'm I'm not meaning to. I think it's just because I. I appreciate Leanna Chapman's uh, ability Mm -hmm. and more than I appreciate the genre of pop music. And I'm, I, I'm definitely a little bit with you on that. Like there's certain, I mean, I'm probably more of a pop music listener than you are. Well, you absolutely are. (laughs) Yeah. But it's not like, it's not a genre that I typically generally go out of my way to listen to a lot of. So I'm not the best, you know, gauge in that sense either. But yeah, I can I can appreciate when people have talent, and she definitely has talent for sure. Like she has a good voice. Mm. Yeah, and that's and so I think that's why I'm getting so like ah, but this thing mm-hmm. is because I want more of her voice. Yeah, I want more of her voice, right? Mm-hmm. Not more of um the robot's voice. You know, um, I'm so actually, and now I feel even worse because when we started, when I uh, first introduced to Leanna, I thought she was a bot online yeah, because of, that uh, was of the posts and all that stuff. And then she messaged me and was just like, I'm a real person, by the way. And I was like, ah, fuck, I'm sorry. Um, so there's a connection back to our first uh, meeting. There but, you go. Coming full circle. <laughs> yeah. But so I will say effective song. Great for the club. Mm-hmm. Catchy hook, uh, good beat, an interest, and and it's funny that you say the early two thousands kind of thing. It, it is an interesting, harkening back to uh, a party song or club song from another time. Yeah, like it definitely to me has that like real like as I was saying before, it definitely has that like real early or not early like later two thousands like. 2010 kind of like club vibe to it like like i said it was like usher kind of is what it reminded me Mm. of or like i'm trying to think of like who else had like it's the synth in it really it's it's that like long running synth that's like very nostalgic to that time period it's like the post sandstorm like barrage of of synth dance music oh absolutely it's yeah like, sandstorm came out and everyone was like we have to have moments of that shit in all of our songs mm-hmm. and so it's so it's interesting to hear a song come out in 2020 that is reflective of that 
Because not a lot of people really do that, which I think is kind of interesting. So I kind of give her props for that, really. Hmm. Like, taking a bit of a of a hearkening back, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. So, um, again, my, my apologies for seeming like I'm coming down hard on this track. Um, I, I understand where it's effective and I, I have my obviously clear opinions of where I think it could be more effective in that genre. And I'd like, I'd like to think that it's because I have a bit more of an objective viewpoint on it because I don't involve myself deeply in pop music a lot but we have been introduced to it a whole lot more lately um yeah we're that is true working with uh with a couple of different rappers here in north bay and having mm-hmm. those tracks being dropped and then working out the differences between the how the track works with their vocals and how you know that all sets up so it's it is interesting to dive into this stuff and to pick apart and say like oh it'd be interesting if this or with that so I think it's more that and then my typical curmudgeon thing of, like, even if we listen to, especially when we listen to indie music, or, like, the genre indie, not, like, actual independent music. Most of the stuff we listen to is independent music, mm-hmm. but uh, I mean, like, the indie genre, which is a ridiculous thing on its own. But, <laughs> um, but like, when we listen to that stuff and, like, shoegaze stuff or, like, or even, like, just black metal or anything like that. Wherever the voice is obscured slightly, because I'm a curmudgeon vocalist who just likes to say, like, here's my voice, fucking accept it or don't, <laughs> um, I I get a little pissy because I'm just like, yeah, but you have the voice, use the voice, um, rather than using something on your, yeah, I add reverb, cool, but, like, I don't add reverb as if I was singing in a hanger that also had another, like, hanger next to it that was reverberating bouncing that off back through another mic through another mic through speakers through a mic you know and there's a cysteine ceiling that's right like that's that's shoegaze music to me that's (laughs) that's all what that shit is and i cannot stand it because i just want to hear the voice and with Mm auto-tune right i will i will never forgive Cher for doing that garbage shit with (laughs) with uh was it life after love or whatever it's called yeah. I'll never forgive her for that song because after that song, then T Pain came out and was just like, huh, well, you did like this cool hit and everyone thought it was really weird and couldn't figure out how to do it for a long time. And now I'm going to use it to make millions. And now it is the standard in pop music. And I remember when. I remember back in my day. Back in my when, day. When, you know, you yeah, you'd have reverb and you'd have effects and stuff, but you'd use it more as a tool rather than. Uh, then and like Leanna's not using it as a crutch because she has the voice so it's not like a Kesha thing and I know Kesha can sing but like she purposely sang out of tune for the longest time so she could do her like her hits from when she first arrived like have you heard the dry tracks of that I know we've talked about this before Mm -hmm. but and I don't think we actually have gone back to do it but if you listen to the dry tracks they are awful because Mm -hmm. she's singing out of tune because if you sing on perfect pitch the autotune doesn't do anything you don't get that effect right so you have to, like, you can add it now as a plug-in, so it'll still give you that whatever, but, like, in that time, you had to actually, like, be kind of off, and then it would warp the vocals and give that weird effect. So she yeah. was just singing garbage. Lo and behold, she can sing. T-Pain can sing. All these people who use it can, so I don't know why they do. Anyway, that's, I'm just ranting now. This is a good party track <laughs> for a club. Um, and... And it should be used that way or used in the bedroom, as I say, uh, which is <laughs> which is also exactly what I said about sin as well. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, Lana has a uh, a certain uh, niche that she's found herself with her pop music where it like if if I could coin a phrase and call it bedroom pop, I will do. Um, you heard it here first, folks. Yeah. So that's so Leanna Chapman's bedroom pop music uh, with her two releases, Sin and Therapy. Uh, great tunes, both for the club yeah. and uh, and for private time. Mm-hmm. And uh, and thank you again for sending us your work. Uh, it is it is legitimately fun to listen to to be able to you know troubleshoot 
in our minds what we think would work and whatever and then ba- and then actually just straight up say like hey this is what definitely works in this song this is you know this is good stuff check this shit out so Mm -hmm. and i'm always the person who's like consistently consuming music so i always find it interesting to listen to genres of music that i don't always typically listen to that's one of the things i enjoy about doing the the reviews on this podcast is like we've listened to stuff that like i wouldn't like on a normal day typically reach for but when i sit down and listen to it i do enjoy it Mm -hmm. so i always find that really interesting and what I do find interesting, and it's funny that you were like, yeah, the hook will definitely stay in my head mm. from this song. I know it will because I know that sin was stuck in your head for like a month after we reviewed it. It fucking was. Like, I remember we were we were driving somewhere or walking somewhere and you like, you started chuckling. I was like, what? And he was like, I have that fucking chorus stuck in my head. Again. <laughs> yeah, again. So, yeah. yeah. So, so, props to you, Leanna, for writing catchy as fuck music. Yeah. So, you've got the earworm thing working for you. You've got the club thing working for you. The bedroom pop thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to make that a real thing. Just like uh, how Green Knuckle Material is uh, Throne Rock. They have that Throne Rock stuff. Yeah. And what is it? The uh, Who was the band that we covered that was Expensive Folk? Oh, yeah. But they coined they that. They coined that one, though. But that's yeah. still funny. Um, so this is bedroom pop. That's Mm -hmm. what I'm going to call this from now on. Um, so hopefully she's not offended by that, but, uh, given the, I mean, just given the, uh, the subject matter of both songs, I don't, I don't know how Mm -hmm. she could be, but, um, but regardless, that is therapy by Leanna Chapman. That's her latest release. Um, I know that she's constantly working on her music and I, I, I believe, I'm not totally sure, but I believe there's an EP in the works. Ooh. Um, so we will have more music out from Leanna Chapman hopefully soon to, mm-hmm. uh, to check out. And that is your single sweep for today or this week or whatever, whenever we get to the next one, whenever we feel like it, damn it. Um, yeah, we are ticking off many, many, many emails and going through stuff. We always have a ton of music to go through. So our apologies if we don't get to it right away. Uh, if we've said we're going to cover it for you, it's going to happen. It's just give us some time, mm-hmm. but yeah, so that's, that's that. That's, that's what that is. Yeah, it didn't even cost that much, that therapy. That was good. Actually, it was totally free, which is not a thing that you usually get, so... Oh, there you go. I feel yeah. better now. Yeah. There's like a weight off my shoulders. Yeah. Having uh, having gone through that session, you know? Mm-hmm. It's probably from all of like the fist pumping and, like, <laughs> the, uh, and the grinding and everything. I feel like, uh, oh, yeah. like an endorphin rush. Mm-hmm. And like an endorphin rush straight to the bedroom where I'm going to pop because it's bedroom pop, right? You're hilarious. Thank you very much. I, uh, I'm a comedian, so uh-huh. um, not a lot of people know that because uh, I do a music podcast and, and everything, but uh, I'm, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a funny man. So <laughs> there's that. Like and subscribe. There you go. That's the spirit. Um, oh, and check out in the description links and stuff. To our stuff and Leanna Chapman stuff. All the stuff. I was waiting for the song to cut me off now. Because basically we're there and Malcolm always says we don't have an ending. And uh, like, the the well, song will just end up, uh, the song will end up cutting us off. It'll be fine. Yeah. We'll, uh, but uh, Malcolm we'll, always says we don't have an ending. And I'm just like, well, you need to find an ending. Like, well, no. I, no, I, no it's, wait, it's probably fine. Wait, hey. Hey, wait, wait. 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 Oh, we're not uh, done yet, though. But, but I, I've had to. Have... Swept Media. Get swept up in today's independent music. What? Uh, this is funny because I just used that turn of phrase and you're like, yeah, we're going to do this, that turn of phrase you said. Shh. <laughs> Shh.